everyone. Um, the Veteran Gaming Australia guys asked me to do a little video on 3D printing because uh, I know a bunch of you are interested in it. Um, the kind that I do is called fused deposition uh, mod modeling or manufacturing um, and it's the kind of 3D printing where a printer takes a roll of plastic and it squirts it out um, layer by layer to build up an object. Uh, the I don't want to go into too much detail because once you get into this hobby, uh, each little aspect of it, like each little setting, each kind of material, um, every kind of different circumstance, all that, each thing is its own rabbit hole. And it's a really complicated but fun hobby. Um, but there's also a sort of simpler version of how you can do things, which is kind of more like just getting and using a tool. Um, so I'll try and go into more detail about that from an overview perspective and hopefully um, give you some information that will help you decide whether or not you want to go down the path of getting a 3D printer or whether you want to um, just connect with other people who already have 3D printers and say hey um, print me Mandalorian helmets or Master Chief helmets or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, yeah so uh, I'll put together a video hopefully cover everything and if I don't, then uh, there's plenty of time to make either other videos or we can do like Facebook um, Q&A type sessions or you can just post questions and I'll see what I can do or other people in the group might have some answers as well. So we'll get into it. Right, so this is going to be my workflow um, from loading an image in the slicer over here on the left to uh, sending it to my printer uh, via Octoprint on the right and hitting print. So I've actually gone in and preheated this printer, which is kind of handy. It doesn't need to, it doesn't have an auto leveling system. So you manually level this one. So you can basically preheat it, get your object, send it. And then once that's done, you can really quickly rip it off and um, send another one to it, which is kind of handy. So, so here I've got my slicer. Um, you've got various settings along the top here that you'll get used to if you get into this. Uh, you got print settings, settings to do with the filament, and settings to do with the printer. Won't go into details now, but I'll load my Benchy uh, because I did a Benchy earlier in the day with these uh, this profile that I've developed, and it was too fast and it didn't cool, and so it didn't do good overhangs. So um, what I'm going to do is I've got my Benchy there. I'm going to go into the print settings and I'm going to slow down that external perimeter in the speed here. Um, why did I, why I had it set to 100? I don't know. I was probably chasing speed for some reason. Um, I'll set the external perimeters to 50. Small perimeters. I'll set those to 30. Um, other than that, everything should be good. Uh, external perimeters, perimeters. Right. That should do us. Right. So, um, yeah, so we've got our object here hit slice uh, it goes through processes a bunch of stuff and it sorts it into layers uh, with the slicer it's kind of handy to visualize what your print is going to do so you can use this little bar to go down through the layers you can go all the way down, down to the start so that's the first layer um, and then it's going to build up build up lay down plastic squiggly lines of the infill um, go up go up uh, yeah so it'll print the object print up there and then I want to show this little feature when we get to uh, here it is the roof so if you see this this layer is uh, a square basically a rectangle um, and it's got no top um, but you can tweak your settings and put, set a bunch of things so that it can go through and bridge and um, you shouldn't get too many droopy strands of plastic if your bridging settings are right. So what you gotta watch out for is when you're cutting your own objects or printing things, you can't expect it to print over air unless it's got something to attach to at, at all the different sides. Um, that's about as steep as an incline as you can get on that on that bow there. Um, so yeah, just something to note for later. Um, yeah, so that's all good. Uh, speed should be all good. Uh, export the G-code. Now here is where you would save it to a thumb drive. I am gonna drop it onto my desktop. Uh, save there. 
uh, and then so if you had your thumb drive you'd whack it on your thumb drive run out to your garage or wherever your printer is whack the thumb drive in the printer and tell the printer to start printing but what I can do here through my browser window is I upload the file from my desktop um, to be I want the most recent one because I've been doing a bit of slicing uh, and that'll be that one open it's just uploading it to the Raspberry Pi and now I can hit print and it'll ask me if I'm sure because that's what I've got it set to and then um, yeah it's gonna go the Raspberry Pi is going to send all the G code commands to the printer um, and watch it in this little camera here and so you can just hop onto the browser um, once you've got this set up uh, and check it out on your phone or a computer or you can actually stream it to the internet so that you can remote access it um, but you have to set up some security and and things around that so that no one can take control of your printer um, yeah so other than that it's going to uh, spit out an, uh, a little benchy now and see if I've slowed it down enough from the earlier benchy to get those overhangs good so welcome to my garage. I'm sandwiched between a squat rack and the laundry with my little crafting table. Um, this is uh, where I try to do uh, a bunch of my crafting things, but I end up dragging it to the outside table and my computer and dinner table, kitchen bench, you know how it is, I guess. Um, so I've got a bunch of tools. I've got my crimping stuff, um, bolts, uh, bits and bobs. Um, printed this little guy he's uh, an articulated space marine um, printed him on the mini uh, so I'm gonna pose him somewhere cool maybe fix his joints um, melt them or something like that rather than glue them and then I'll paint him up um, printed this little guy well I printed the top um, he's got four motors uh, Raspberry Pi and lipo battery and a charger and that sort of thing um, so that's uh, another thing I'm trying to work on is getting a little little rover done, a little robot. Um, of course, being a Star Wars nerd, um, I've got my Han Solo blaster uh, that I've been working on. Um, well, not really. I printed it, painted it a bit, and it's just been sitting around here now. Um, got my Mandalorian helmets. Um, the first one was printed by a friend um, uh, in pieces because they had a little printer. And then uh, I stuck it together and whacked in the, the visor and and then uh, got kind of hooked and uh, had to get my own printer. Um, this one I did on the Mega X, that one I did on the Mega X. Uh, they've still got more work to do before they're considered finished, I guess. Um, and yeah, I'll talk you through some of the bits and pieces I have. Um, that's a filament dryer. Um, and... It's kind of weird because the stuff you need, just like any hobby, it kind of blows out. Um, so I've got like color change, moisture absorbing desiccant, which I've got in a little container, which I keep inside the, the spool there. Um, and when that absorbs moisture from the air, cause, or because I use it to keep my filament in uh, vacuum bags, um, you just roast it in the oven and it goes back to its original color and then it's ready to suck up moisture again. Um, here's my Prusa Mini printer. Um, this one's a little little guy, uh, and got a 180 mil cubic build plate. Um, but it's a really great consumer grade uh, home 3D printing tool that is ready to rock from when it's assembled. Um, this guy, my first 3D printer, uh, Any Cubic Mega X. Um, it's kind of, it's similar to the Creality ones you might have heard of. Um, I just watched a 3D printing nerd video and I liked what he had to say about this one. And so I got it and then over time started modding the bejesus out of it and making it uh, print better, uh, better materials, faster, all that sort of stuff. So it's running custom firmware um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty handy little tool does the job so um, I guess while I'm here I might as well talk about the differences between uh, 3d printers so uh, the short version is if you want to tinker and have fun and make 3d stuff have a bit of a hobby get something like this 
Um, this cost me, oh, I want to say around 500 Australian bucks. Um, whereas this thing cost me getting closer to 800 Australian dollars posted from Prague, uh, where they made. So, but the difference is this can spit things out and you don't have to learn all the intricacies of how the machine fully works. Uh, and even you don't really have to get into detailed slicer settings if you don't want to. So you can get something like this and just start printing stuff and you're going to be sweet. You get something like this, I printed out a bunch of stuff. It was okay, not excellent. Um, now it's pretty reliable. Um, but I've had to rewire bits of it uh, because the stock, the way it came, it really it was putting too much current through some two two smaller wires uh, and so eventually they were going to burn out um, and some people like weren't uh, didn't catch that in time and they burn components out and often the manufacturers happy to replace them and stuff but you don't want to be um, it you, you know that's a potential fire hazard uh, you don't want something like that uh, if, if you can avoid it you know um, so, I mean, if you're keen to tinker, go nuts, get one of these, get a Creality, whatever, do that. You can print your, print your Mandalorian or Master Chief helmets uh, and tweak your printer and have a, a fun hobby. Um, but if you want a tool, you don't want to really get into the nitty gritty, get something like this. Cost you a little bit more initially, but it's just going to work. Um, yeah, so that's my little 3D printing space. Right, so we're nearly at the end here um, of this little print job. Um, the bow still looks a bit dodgy. Um, but yeah, so this printer um, I have set up with a, a bigger than standard nozzle. Um, and generally I use this to print, um, like this would be good for printing helmets for example. Um, because it's a, it's a slightly bigger than the average nozzle. And... So you can print thicker walls, which means less laps around an object to get the same thickness and to get your strength of the object and thick, good walls. Um, it also means you can do higher layers, but you tend to notice the layers more than the um, the resolution XY axes. The layers are your uh, Z axis, like the vertical stacking. You know when you can see a 3D printed thing, you can see the lines in it. So this one you can print like much bigger layer lines to get a much faster print but I generally go with the normal size layer lines which is about 0.2 mil um, so I'll crack him off underneath is okay what have we got here yeah so the bow's still a bit dodgy so I'm probably still printing a little bit fast um, for PETG to overhang that much um, if I was to print this on my mini uh, it's got a smaller than average nozzle so it takes a bit longer to print um, but you get a much cleaner, nicer little print. So um, otherwise, dimensionally, this doesn't look too bad. You'd um, measure it with your calipers just to confirm. Um, yeah, so there's our little, there's our little benchy boat. Um, it ticks the boxes. It, it demonstrates what how good your settings and, and printer basically are right this second. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Um, if anyone's got any questions, shoot me a message or whatever. Um, otherwise, uh, hopefully I've demystified some things. And if you're keen to get a 3D printer, go nuts and start creating.